Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, February 23rd edition of All-Star Wrestling Review Series and February 23rd, 1980. Again, 1980, a really big year, starting to begin to be the transition. I'd say the 70s uh, were, you know, still Vince Sr. In, in large part, obviously. Uh, 1980 through 82, you can start to feel the influence of... Uh, Vincent Kennedy McMahon little by little and obviously by 82 the takeover is there but a couple of years before you can start to feel you know the, the reliance on bigger stars the reliance on perhaps a bigger variety of people and uh, here in this episode you can con see some of that anyway Rene Goulet pinning Manny uh, Sierra 552 gut wrench suplex Goulet had been here in 72 before would have loved to have seen him at that run, the, low, the early 70s footage is sparse, if at all. Uh, I think the earliest footage I've seen anywhere in any territory on a consistent basis week to week might be 74. Um, and I don't think it was even WWF. Anyway, um, arm bars by the enhancement talent. Head scissors take over by Goulet. Goulet manages to get a short arm scissors and stays pretty consistent here. Uh, locks in what we would now know as a bit of a guillotine. Also locks his man up with uh, an Indian death lock type maneuver and um, eventually fights his way out of the run there and ultimately gets to where he wants to get to. Goulet manages the gut wrench suplex and the victory eventually here. Uh, certainly. Uh, we then see Larry Sharp up next. In a uh, enhancement talent match, pinning pinning Billy Berger, uh, 635, with a pile driver. Larry Sharp, most notably known to be the creator and the incinerator of the Monster Factory, uh, clubbing forearms across the back, side headlocks, and cheating at every given opportunity. Actually, mo a modified bow and arrow is also rather popular for him here. Uh, we see... Sharp managing to hit a couple of Irish whips and a back elbow and ultimately, um, you know, kind of does the necktie on a um, chin lock and gets as far in, in as close as he can. Uh, Sharp hits a leaping elbow, manages to win with a pile driver again. Pile driver not as, as uh, lethal a hold here as it is in other territories, or regarded as such. But um, then we go to interview with the tag team champions who talk about uh, synchronicity. They talk about the Samoans. They talk about synchronicity. They talk about moving forward as a team and always being in motion of keeping other teams not really knowing what they're doing. They talk a lot about all of that. Larry Zabisco against John Buford, 601 with a suplex. During the introduction, um... Zabisco states he no longer lives in Pittsburgh, the home of Bruno, uh, and his hometown is no one's business. Not necessarily needing a, um, you know, six-minute match here. Zabisco, obviously the heel turn, a pretty big deal. Uh, Zabisco t is taken back into a submissive state by his adversary, and we see Zabisco getting advantages, take down arm bars, chin locks, and the like. Uh, the enhancement talent does get a few minutes of extra time. Nothing major there, but ultimately it's it's continuation of there, and uh, short, short run, and Zabisco manages to do what he can, where he can, and ultimately gets the suplex and gets the victory along the way here. Um, you know, Putski manages to do where what he can, where he can. Putski and Santana in a non-title match. Up next here um, against two enhancement talents. Never really understood the concept of having championship enhancement matches. Uh, 609, Santana pin Savage. Sunset flip from the ring apron into the match. Bruno conducts an inter ringside interview with Putski and Santana about competing in singles matches. They basically say they got to stay sharp 
and they're a better team because they still stay sharp for singles. It helps their endurance and all of that. Um, obviously, Santana still the, I wouldn't say main star, but the focal point of the team as far as excitement is concerned. Uh, Putski stays on the enhancement count with arm bars, arm, you know, hammer locks and the like. Santana comes in, does more go behind work, also staying on the arm of the other. Enhancement count, uh, chin locks, and basic stuff there. Santana also tries to take things a little lower to the mat. Um, and again, you know, they get the cross body and the win. The champions are on a pattern of winning ways. Then we go to our final match of the day. Uh, Tony Atlas, who it seems is going to be a major force in 1980 and beyond, against Jojo Andrews, six, um, I'm sorry, Tony Ellis against Ron Lee, 254, military press into a gut buster, um, Jojo Andrews is the, I believe the next week or so for, uh, for Tony here, but the Ron Lee, 254 is the main deal here, Atlas continues to be a power guy, continues to be a guy that, uh, uh, you know, does some pre-match posing, although in a babyface way. Um, you know, knuckle, Greco-Roman knuckle locks um, and kind of cranks on headlocks. Uh, quick takedown by Atlas and manages to get, as mentioned, the, the uh, military press slam, which for the time was an impressive move, uh, and gets the victory there. We'll be back with more right after this.